Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I would like to give all of you a very big thank you that even if I have been active on YouTube, inactive on YouTube, you guys have been there and you know like continuously subscribing, liking and you know sharing my channel. So very very thankful for all of you. All right. So as promised, I am one day late though for the promise, but still as promised, I'll start today chapter number one of history class nine and i will try to bring up the chapter to you in two or three segments different different videos and that is how we'll cover up the whole chapter okay so uh before i begin with the chapter or try to explain you the depth of the chapter let us understand the basic first word of the chapter see the name denotes the french revolution all right so revolution means any sort of change the people of France, they were not in a good condition. The things were not according to any other peaceful country. All right. And what was the problem they were facing? Not just one, many problems. And the first page, which you are able to see here right now, what it shows, it shows the um, turmoil condition. Of which was going through, you know, this whole scenario, which you can see that, you know, this whole paragraph, it shows what was the condition of the people in France was like. So what they did, this is again a flashback. We will understand how today, I, I mean, this flashback came into picture. All right. So uh, what really happened on the morning of 14th July, there was a rumor that, you know, there might be open fire on the people by the king and the troops. So what they did, the people formed a group. All right. And then what they did, they went into search of the arms and ammunition in the government buildings. Now, this is a very basic common logic that if you feel or if you know that, you know, there can be some sort of harm to you or anyone might attack, what you will try to do, you will try to safeguard yourself. That's what these people did. These people try to safeguard themselves from any sort of evil and how that could be done by obviously accumulating all the arms and ammunition. That was a rumor. Again, I'm telling you. All right. So that happened. Then what happened that all those people, they, you know, they stormed, they attacked the fortress of Bastide. And, you know, what they did, uh, they uh, released a lot of prisoners from the fort of Bastide. And that is how, you know, uh, the picture gets more clear. Okay, so that is how they attacked on the fortress and, you know, they attacked, the, uh, they held the prisoners to release themselves. Okay, so, and there were several other reasons as well. The people of the France, they were not quite happy with how the regime was and how the system was over there. Okay, and what was the, you know, what was the way of the king of ruling the country? These all were the reason that led to one single thing and that was the establishment of liberty equality fraternity which is the more uh, which is the major co uh, conclusion of the chapter all right so let's understand how it all started so uh, 1774 the bourbon family was the king family okay and the name of the king was what the name of the king was uh, Louis 16. It's not Louis. It's Louis 16. It's a French name. All right. And in French language, if the if any word or uh, if any single letter of a particular word is consonant, you don't pronounce that. All right. So it's Louis 16. Yeah. What Louis 16 did? Louis 16 married the princess Mary Antoinette. Okay. And what happened? Then she ma she married the princess. And, uh, you know, she was an Austrian princess. And I think you all have heard till now that, uh, you know, France and Austria never had really good relationships. And then he married someone from that region. So people were very, very angry with the particular king. And when the king sat on the throne, his treasure was empty. Empty treasure means over here that, you know, um, when the king sat on the throne, he was looking for treasure, for money, so that he could you know, run the kingdom. But what happened? Uh, Britain has always had one thing in mind, that I'll try to capture regions as much as I can. And France also thought, if Britain can do, why cannot I? So France did the same thing. Actually, France was trying to help the 13 colonies of America, which were under, which were captured by Britain. So all of the money was draining into that war. And that is how the the treasury of the France was empty. And by empty means it had nothing. So Louis XVI thought, you know, how to get this uh, treasure back. He decided to 
uh, uh, like you know to impose taxes on people and by taxes lot of taxes so that he will get his money back by hook or by crook the condition of france society let us understand one by one and then we'll move again all right yeah so yeah i believe uh, everybody is able to see that you know um, clergy nobility and the third estate let's understand clergy first clergy in english mean religious men and in hindi means dharm guru i believe you all have heard about the name of the pope all right so pope was pope is generally known as a priest and that priest try to influence people and guide people as well so what he they did the pope had the biggest autonomy in the this whole admin system of france okay the the pope would ask people to whatever they have produced you know in a year they are supposed to submit something something amount of that particular you know share into the church or give it to the church okay and the pope or the clergyman they used to you know like influence nobility how by telling the king how to rule them you know how to rule on the people how to tell people what's right what's wrong that's how they did it yeah so and the th uh, uh, nobility means if you will uh, if you will see nobility has the word noble in it so noble means who noble means the family which belonged from the king's family they were actually from the king's king's political order all right so they were aristocrat and born with a sil silver spoon in mouth they never had to face the real you know the real france how the france was how people were fighting and they would you know dying every single day just to fulfill their basic demands and the last was the third estate businessmen were there merchants were there but they were not as much as you know like um prosperous as other community they were all they all come under third estate only peasants and artisans were there laborers were also there all right now uh, before we move on to the chapter let us understand one thing that is feudalism okay now what is feudalism i will explain you with the help of a flow chart i'm making it and if you wish to have notes so let me know in the comment section i will try to make notes and upload it as well if you want them obviously yeah just give me a moment yes so feudalism let us understand feudalism <clears throat> yeah quite visible so feudalism means what there was one feudal lord feudal lord means big landlords and he would ask small farmer to work on his land and whatever the produce was that was shared all right this was feudalism now what happened that the 90% of the population which was third estate they never really had you know anything big all right the churches and you know the clergymen they were from first and second estate and population major population was of 90% all right the member of first two estates were clergy and nobility they had all the rights they had to pay no taxes but all the taxes was paid by the third estate so this was a condition which you know which was letting to several other problems as well okay and you know that uh, there were sort of taxes to be taken from people and now what are those taxes peasants were supposed to you know like service to give service to lord and to work for the lord there were two taxes tithe and tally okay now the first was in which what was happening the, the this tax the tax tithe was taken by the church all right and 1/10 of whatever produced by the people you know that has to be given to the church i already i already mentioned earlier as well and tally which was given that to the state all right yeah 
this image is very powerful which is over here i will just annotate this for you so that you might be able to understand the you know the depth of this image that what is this showing this image is showing that you know that uh, this person who has come to king with you know lot of resources in his hand and the king is not even looking at him because the king only cares about whatever the person has got as a resource so and i think you guys can able to see the spider web over there how the spider and the fly the fly has fallen into the trap of the spider web and that fly cannot get out of it just like this man who was giving who's giving services to the king he is also in a very big dead trap and he can't you know like come out of that place so you must understand that how life has been so typical to these people and they have nothing but you know just to face all the problem and try to have a life which can fulfill just their basic needs yeah okay let's move again forward all right now the next was struggle to survive now the population of france was rising and see very simple logic population goes up needs also goes up that means productivity had productivity has to go up as well all right so that is what happening the production of grains were not as equal to demand it's very important let's take an example at our at our home of our homes only you know for example if there are five people living in the house and if everybody is eating two chapatis you know either in the day or in the night that means 10 chapati total and if one day you know whoever is cooking if they cook one chapati less or one chapati more that can lead to you know like not proper fair share if one chapati more is being made then it's fine but one chapati less can surely you know disturb the whole eating portion so that is what right demand has to be equal to productivity and sometime if it's extra then it's good but if it's less then it's not good that was the problem all right population was increasing but the demand was not equally met all right most of the worker they had fixed wages now you understand right you can't have a life on fixed wages for the rest of your life you need a wage to increase so that your you know luxuries your other activities could also increase up all right so this is the thing and gap between rich and poor was widening which is very important why i'm saying it's important see if the gap between rich and poor keeps on increasing then the rich becomes richer poor becomes poorer so the gap has to be small so that there can be a equality in the whole you know society or the living uh, condition see one thing you have to understand that any country is not made in one single day we know that france today is actually fashion capital you know like it is a global city of the world but france has also done a lot of struggle and i think it's quite visible to all of you now the one word which we are reading over here is subsistence crisis see a situation where you know like basic livelihood basic livelihood is not given to people and what are basic livelihood simple your food your clothing your shelter and the you know like the air you're breathing in if these are not pure these are not according to you know like your requirement eventually things can look quite quite bad all right so yeah um now the next topic is what middle class it's a very nice thing you'll understand this see um whenever you know we say the word middle class we 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 you know have this instant idea in our mind okay middle class means what a person who is earning a very minimal salary and trying to feed his family but no the condition of middle class which is in every country exist in every single country right now has come from french revolution only how like in the past they had to fight for a lot but what happened now what they decided this middle men they started doing trade not with in their own france or whatever they were doing trade in all of the country they was they started educating themselves which is very important if you will not educate yourself if you will not try to work with yourself what will happen eventually you know things will not be at your hand and if you want to educate yourself you have to study that's what they started doing they became prosperous by educating themselves in the 18th century there was a group called middle class which showed up which turned up all right and they were earning a lot of money through trade and manufacturing all right and what happened the third estate had now lawyers administrative officials you know and there were lot of people you will uh, you know like learn about them the two or three are most important and they are jean law 
Jean Jacques Rousseau, Montesquieu. So, what they did see? <clears throat> um, first is uh, our John Locke. John Locke, what he did that in his book Two Treatises of Government, he talked about there has to be no, you know, like divine right to anyone. What is the meaning of divine right? Somebody who has the right to, you know, to rule on people, and by telling that whatever it's right to that person, all of them are supposed to follow that person, whatever the other person is saying. No, he said that divine right is not for anybody. Everybody needs to work on their merit, and what does merit means? Whatever the cal caliber you have, whatever you know, you can only get your things done by that only. You have no other right, and which is very important to understand. That he said that nobody has divine right, okay, and everybody has to work hard for getting money or for earning any amount of whatever they wish for. All right, Rousseau also said that you know. Uh, there has to be a government which will understand that people are the major component of any society and people have the right to select their representatives. All right. Now, in the Montesquieu's book, Spirit of Law, he talked about different level of government, that is legislative, executive, and judiciary. Don't you think it's so beautiful? I mean, what Mahatma Gandhi or Ambedkar talked like around like in the 18th, 18th, 19th century, you know, Montesquieu talked about this like four or 500 years back, which we all should take as a nice example that, you know, if you have to save your country, if you have to work for yourself, it's you who has to stand for it. All right. Yeah. And so he talked about separation of powers. Now, a question might come up in your examination, very easy question. But the spirit of law written by whom you can just give the answer Montesquieu. All right. Yeah. Next. Then slowly, slowly what happened, this model of, you know, separation of power was adopted by USA as well. You know, that is how things were changing. The idea of these philosophers were discussed intensively in Salon. Now, the Salon word is very important. Why? Because Salon means what? Salon actually means a group of people where some sort of intellectual conversation is going on. And by intellectual conversation, what I mean? These people who gathered themselves in coffee houses or anywhere they were talking about books, changes, new ideas, enlightenment, revolution, and whatnot. So salon means a place where people gathered to have some sort of intellectual conversation or maybe discussion. Okay, so this is how the country was quite, you know, getting its fuel. And who were giving fuel? All of these people who had several ideas to discuss. Okay. So the news of Louis XVI, what happened? Now, you know, Louis XVI was planning to impose further taxes. See, the people were already in so much pain, no money, no particular job, no wages, no food on plate. Do you think they'll be able to pay more taxes? So people were very, very frustrated with whatever he was taking decisions. All right, what happened? Now, Louis XVI, what he did, he decided to have, a, you know, he thought, why not, you know, that we can have a meeting and that meeting we can decide whatever has to be done. So on 5th May 1789, Louis XVI called up a meeting where was 300 members from the first estate, 300 second estate and 600 from third estate because obviously population was high in that estate and people wanted to change. They thought this time maybe Louis XVI has changed, the king has changed and he's trying to hear our problem. So those people who ever were not allowed the you know they were uh, they written all their they wrote all their demands on a particular piece of paper so what they were looking for the third estate wanted a very simple thing that one person should have one vote all right but you know what they what the clergy and nobility had in mind they knew each estate will have one vote and eventually what will happen they eventually those two estates will win and they'll impose taxes again but this time what happened a revolutionary change happened and what happened third estate walked out where they walked out they walked into the tennis court and they decided until and unless we have a written constitution, we will not move a single feet from here and we will decide what has to be done with us by on our own. We will not hear what whatever anybody says. Now, 
Mirabo and Abyssia. They too were actually belonging from a very high class family, like an aristocrat family, and they decided to, you know, to lead the third estate. Always remember, you can't just have a revolution, you know, just by fighting or blood shedding. If you really want to win the revolution, you have to use your brains. And what you will do, you will think, you know, that I have to work in a right way so that I can make everyone understand whatever I need, whatever we wish for, whatever is my demand. And for that, you need some faces, you need some popular faces, you know, who, who can put, who can like, uh, I mean, you know, who can just what uh, keep in front of the people, whatever that whole community wanted. And that's what these two did. Mirabo and Abyssias, what they did, they decided that nobody is born in, if anybody is born in noble family, doesn't mean they'll get all the privileges. Everybody has to earn privileges. All right. And what they gave in the speech, Abyssia, he was actually a priest. You know what a priest means, even if somebody doesn't know. Priest means Pujari. All right. He wrote a pamphlet. What is the third state? Kya hai ye third state? So in that National Assembly of Versailles, they drafted a constitution. But what happened? A severe winter was waiting for them. Prices of the bed bread rose. You know, bakers were explore, exploited. They hoarded all supplies. People were, span, people were spending hours and hours standing in the queue. And, you know, nobody was there to help them. The, the king ordered the troops to move into the city and, you know, destroy the Bastille. So, because, you know, they, they were so, so, there were so many things taking place now. People did not know what to do. So what happened? A rumor was spread. And what was the rumor? That the manner, what they will do, they will hire bands of brigands who were on their way to destroy the right crop. What it means that the manner, what they will do, the manner will increase the charges if any, if any single common person tried to destroy the, you know, destroy the crop. So what, you know, this is how this caused a very big, you know, state of fear in the mind of the peasant. So what they did, they attacked all those, you know, those manners and they burned down all the dues which were to be paid by the peasants. And what happened by doing this, a lot large number of nobles they got very you know like they were thinking now what we'll do they got very scared and what they did they were trying to scare and migrate now one question i must tell you i don't know you know or no but i should you know like convert convey to you that if this question comes up in the examination from which particular place of france louis 16 was trying to escape your answer has to be paris okay yeah, so that's what happened. And they were migrating to neighboring countries. So what happened after this, you know, like changes, Louis XVI decided that, okay, what he will do, he will have a constitution so that his powers could be checked. And, you know, no taxes will be like people had to pay them. And a lot of things, they started changing. All right, let's move to other topic. France became constitutional monarchy. Now, what is constitutional monarchy? It means the king will surely have powers, but all of the powers are to be written under the particular constitution. All right. Now, what happened? The National Assembly completed the draft and, you know, there were some of the powers limited for the monarch. And what happened? That there was three, se several, three separate levels for their legislature, executive and judiciary. And this made the system quite, quite clear. And people were quite happy, quite, uh, I mean, you can say that, you know, for if a person has seen nothing and if he gets something, now that person becomes happy. And that was happening with France. So what happened? The constitution of 1791 vested power that now National Assembly can make laws. They can in indirectly elect people. But who will elect? Only men of 25 years who have paid at least three days of laborer wage who that was an active citizen or only they can vote. The remaining men and all women were passive citizens. That means they will not be able to vote. And those who will pay a lot of taxes, you know, they can be a member of the assembly. So there were some sort of quite critical, I must say, you know, like um, uh, particular like instructions were given who can vote and who cannot. So now what? The rights of man, citizen, rights such as right to life, property of speech, freedom of opinion, equality of law, everything was, you know, quite inalienable rights. But then what happened that they cannot be taken away. And it was the duty of the state to protect everyone's natural rights. All right. So, yeah, 
i believe that's it for the day for uh, like um, you know for the next part we'll continue with the chapter till then if you think that you have any question from this particular portion which i have you know taught today you can surely uh, let me know in the comment section below and i'll try to attach the notes all right so i hope you all have a great time ahead and celebrate the share with all the fun and all the love with your family members take care and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye have a great time ahead